right, just got in a uh, kind of a screw lock shaky head mold. So I don't have the screws with me right now. They're in uh, some other packages, but this is a, uh, a configuration that I personally throw a lot are these kind of oop, screw lock shaky heads. So I'll be, well, it doesn't want to, doesn't want to stay of course on camera, but I'll be really, really excited to use this mold uh, for personal use to throw a lot of uh, hand poured worms that I like to throw. So looking forward to getting this one on camera soon. We're not doing this one in today's video. We're doing that one. Welcome back to the world's worst fishing everybody. I'm Chris Jones. Thanks for being here and taking time out of your schedules to watch me play with some fishing lures. Now, um, today I'm pretty excited. Uh, it's taken me a long time to get this mold, but I finally got it. I had to trade Happy Jack for it. Uh, so a few videos ago, uh, I helped one of my good buddies, longtime best friends, get set up making his own plastics at his house. And he got his hands on this mold and so I basically kind of traded him a couple of other molds for it. Like I actually gave away multiple molds to get this one mold. Um, so with that said, it is the Angling AI Crazy Hog, okay? Many of you know this style of bait, of course, by the name Brush Hog. Um, this is the Crazy Hog. And we're gonna make some crazy colors with it. I'm pretty excited. We're gonna go full ham on this one. We're not gonna start basic. We're going straight to the triple injector because there's one color that I've made before that I have to see in this mold. That's why I wanted this mold was for the triple injector. Let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna be going with the dead on plastic swim bait jerk bait blend in the black bucket, the sinking stuff. So we're just gonna give it a, a quick stir in here and uh, we will be ready for action. But this is a nice medium durometer plastic, perfect for a bait this size, perfect for your kind of you know, creatures and bugs and things like that. You know, it's it's not soft like worm. It's not super firm like your saltwater and tube. It's kind of the happy medium of the plastisol world. All right, plastic is in. Let's see, that was three one cups. So we'll do, I don't know, we'll try six minutes there, about two minutes per cup. Should get us close. While the plastic's cooking, I want to show y'all a pour that I am extremely proud of. This is sort of a new method and uh, I guess a new technique of plastic application. You can see there's lots of kind of overlapping, almost triangular stripes, right? It's all a bunch of vertical barring and there's a, a, a lot of three-dimensionality and depth to it, dimension. And this was very hard to achieve. I've done a lot of pours that look like this, but never exactly like this one. And uh, super, super happy with it. That right there is a uh, signature Jets and I. That's our uh, magic green. But really, really happy with that, with that pour right there. All right, so uh, here are the three cups of swim bait blend. You can see uh, it's, a, it's a very clear blend. Got a few top bubbles on the top layer, but I think we're looking good. I can always run it through the vac chamber. Uh, if it gets more bubbly because a lot of times whenever you add pigments um, and you know you kind of stir in your colors a lot of times you do introduce moisture it's just a part of the world that we live in so this one is going to kind of go blue orange yellow and the key to this color is to actually dial down the saturations and i like to do that by adding brown. So for example, we can make that blue a little less, you know, kids marker set looking by adding a little bit of brown to dull it, right? And, and it just makes it a smidge more natural. Just browning it up. And we're gonna do that for all of the colors. See how that changed? Little nuances like that can sometimes be the difference in a good color versus a great color. But you know, sometimes you want the really bright saturation, just whenever I'm making a craw color, you know, so, so many craw colors look like fall leaves, right? You know, which, which are never super bright. You know, lots of kind of natural orange, yellows, and browns. That's more what you find in nature. And so that's what we want to try and do. 
we want to try and duplicate that. Yeah, you can see how that brown just kind of dulls that orange a little bit. And to me, now that went from, you know, kids crayon orange, now to a craw orange. It's, it's dulled down. And to me, that, that's just kind of how I like to build color. All right, and then we're gonna do the same with this yellow. I'm gonna add the yellow. This will technically be the bottom side of the bait, right? Okay. Maybe a little bit thicker. You know, again, you wanna to try to get saturations pretty even, if you can. And then, dull it. A little bit of brown. Yeah. Even, even a slight change like that, to me, always turns out best. And then we're actually going to add some of this holographic, right? Which is not a very natural effect for a crawl. I'm out of regular black flake. That's what happens when your best friend decides he's gonna start making baits of his own. He comes and cleans you out. So this is the closest thing <laughs> to normal black flake that we have is this meteor. Which, hey, I'm not complaining. A little hologram flake in your crawls, why the hell not? What I like to do is what I like to call the drizzle test. Just kind of get some of the plastic together. And then now we can see how it's going to kind of play together. So you can see it creates new shades all on its own. And, you know, to me that always makes a really, really awesome triple laminate color. All right, here we go see what we can do i think this is going to look pretty awesome again i like to kind of put the orange in the middle if you have a triple injector you know you can arrange these however you want put the blue in the middle put the yellow in the middle you're always going to get something neat here we go All right, first crazy hogs ever. Here we go, drum roll please. Let's see how we did. There we go. Or not, or not, or not. I don't know what I'm doing. An amateur. Come out on that side, ooh. Okay, so right away, we actually need more saturation. This one looks really, really great. But I think some of the color is getting a little lost. And we, and we can actually make these colors thicker. Well, that's going to be hard to get that back in the mold. Oh, I don't know. What do y'all think? Is that, like, super sexy? Or do we need... A little bit more saturation because what a, what more saturation will do is kind of let you see a little bit more color here in these extremities. I really like the the flaps there, but if you look at the body, you don't really see much of that blue on the top. And so I I wonder if it needs to be a little bit more saturated. But I mean, talk about a beautiful natural color. My God. That's it. And I have to say, uh, mold shoots incredibly well. I don't see any defects or dents or anything going on like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll up the saturation. Okay, so we're back to a little bit of drawing board on the colors. So the number one thing is just to add more blue to the blue. Okay. And then a little bit more orange. You know, we don't want to change the hue too much. We just want to make them thicker. Up the saturation. Because I think we can get this one looking a little bit better than it's looking. And that's the goal, is to try to keep refining. You know, and then really the right way to do it is, once you get it, write a good recipe down. You know, and that way you can always kind of come back to it. Got a little bit of pigment splotched up there. 
but I mean a beautiful beautiful color you know even even when you don't exactly nail it and I don't think we did just then and you can see it's absolutely stunning it makes a great color kind of kind of no matter what if you ask me it's always going to kind of do it might actually brighten up that orange with just a little bit of yellow there mixing orange and yellow together will light up your life uh, sometimes it can be spectacular the results that you get it can be absolutely spectacular yeah so there's what we have now a little bit more distinction between each color so I think we'll try that all right here we go with round two let's see how she comes out okay mm. really got to push down on the old trip that thing will make a man out of you okay All right, all right. Do you see what I see? I'm not a good singer, but look at that. That is more like it. A little bit more kind of contrast between each color. Each color is featured a little bit more. You can really tell there's yellow there. You can really see the orange. You can really see the blue. To me, this is much more accurate to what I wanted it to look like. And you can see there's just a little bit more color blending in those tails because there's just more saturation there. And I think that's what makes a bait like this and something like, say, the Ecto Crawl, uh, just such awesome baits for laminates and especially triple laminates is because of how many different kind of uh, thicknesses and textures and, and all the appendages that blend the color. You know, it's, it's just a thing of beauty how certain molds can be configured to display color yeah so there's a look at it from the other side yeah what do y'all think oh triple injections just undefeated in the injection world man let's make some more of them all right a little close-up view of round three here we go Yeah, you can really get up close to it here. <sighs> and so I watched the uh, the movie Titanic the other day, you know, 1997 movie. I was real young then. And uh, does anybody else think that Rose is just kind of a bad person? I mean, she sucks. Like, if you really watch the movie and you think about Rose's character... You know, she plays the victim. Oh, I'm a rich girl. And then she's unfaithful to her, uh, you know, fiancé, who's kind of a rich, you know, he's, he's not very pleasant. But, I mean, goodness God, she's unfaithful. She has, you know, uh, an affair with this boy that she met on the boat and only spent like two days with. And then the end of the movie, her version of heaven is hanging out with the guy from 80 years earlier that she only knew for two days. What about like your kids, your husband, everyone else in your life? Just dumb. Yeah, this round came out absolutely smoking. And what's cool is that, you know, with the triple injector, sometimes they come out a little different, right? See how that, this one flap has sort of an orange tip. This one doesn't. You know, there's, see how orange those two appendages are? On this side, there's a little less orange, right? So unique the way that it layers colors. And you know, I say that every time I use the triple injector, but that's what makes it so fun, is how many different ways it can kind of do the same thing, right? That's the same bait, but no two are alike, just like with hand pouring. All right, we're taking this tractor for another round. Here we go. Oh, I forgot the blending block. Whoops. That's a disaster. Look at that. Talk about having the cart before the horse. Guess I should pay attention more. 
but hopefully we salvaged it. I don't see why it wouldn't work. All right, all right, all right. We are still looking good. We're still on track. Colors still look good. You know, after several reheats, you know, the color's still looking good. A lot of that is just not overheating too much. Whenever you reheat your plastic, of course, you're always getting a little bit closer to degrading the resin. And once that starts happening, it starts kind of throwing your color off. You know, luckily dead on plastic has, you know, incredible heat tolerance. You can reheat it many times and uh, you can see the colors are still looking good. You know, but you always have to maintain good practice and don't overheat. You know, the more reheat you do, you know, eventually one's going to come out and you're going to be like, ah, my color doesn't look the same. And that's when you basically have to throw in the towel. But dead on's really good about that and uh so far so good okay so here's what we wound up with and uh, i'm curious to know y'all's opinion right these over here is closer to how i wanted it to like actually look okay in terms of just the color saturation and overall look here was the first round right you can see everything is just a lot less saturated if we just put them side by side right which one did you prefer? This one over here is definitely a little bit more natural, right? Nature would build this color this way, maybe a little bit less saturated. Or did you like this? You know, I kind of like this one just from an eye pop standpoint, you know? Because in, in fishing lures, we're so used to just our eye is just trained to look at brighter, more vibrant colors. But that right there is also great. You know, we could have just easily stuck with that. This is just kind of what I wanted to see in this mold because with the added saturation, I think you get a little bit better blending in the extremities. So question of the day for this video, which one did you prefer? The first version or the second version? All right, it's early, early morning the next day. So got my, my bed hair going on, which my hair never looks good, let's be honest. This video isn't over. I went to bed last night with a bait in my mind. I've got to do this crappy pattern in a swim bait. So we're about to do that. I'm gonna show you a few highlights from it, see how it turns out. Yeah, so this right here is gonna be the first stages of it. And it's a real random, splotchy, very see-through. Um, kind of black pattern about it so this is going to be a white crappie so white crappie sort of have a broken up random splotchy vertical barring and then you know lots of yellows and hues and kind of green highlight look about them so that right there is kind of how we're going to start as you can see the layers are there but they're very undefined and they're very see-through and that's basically on purpose the way that I've chosen to apply the plastic. No two are exactly alike. All right, just got the uh, white crappy topped off. I forgot to actually show you the inside um, of the molds once all of my layers were down, all my skins were down. So my apologies, but we'll meet you back when these are done. And uh, fingers crossed that they look good. Tried a new method of plastic application and was really happy with them as, as I was going. So we'll see how the end result turns out. Yeah, there it is. That is absolutely as authentic as I can hand pour a white crappie. And what I love is sort of that green aqua highlight at the top. You see that color profile a lot. However, I got bit by the uh, uneven hot plate bug. These two got too hot. So look at the difference here. You can see the flakes started to sink and some of the white pearl actually went high up into the bait cavity. So, you know, this is just a method that requires me to leave them on the hot plate longer. And sometimes a couple of your molds get too hot. So kind of aggravated there because this turned out so good. Yeah, okay, so I got three out of the six, so not the best odds there. You know, and, and there again, oops, you know, the other ones are really good. And they still meet the criteria of this pattern. 
you can just see they look a little too marbled, right? There's just some swirly swishing going on there that I didn't intend. These came out as intended. So, you know, you could always make the argument, hey, you know, still strap that one up and throw it. But, you know, you want to be as consistent as you can. So, you know, hey, that, that just goes to show even someone with years of experience, you know, can still have these little boo-boos happen. But, uh, really happy with the pattern. And uh, let me know what y'all think in the comments below. Yeah, had to finish them off with an eye. And uh, what's cool is that uh, in my signature series with uh, Jetson Lures, the tarpon pupil is very, very similar to the shape and kind of overall profile of a crappie. So those are yellow tarpons and they fit absolutely wonderfully with these uh, white crappie here. All right, we're gonna sign this video off, public sub. So uh, quick moment of silence to all those who don't have Publix. I'm so sorry. But uh, come to Florida and get you a public sub. So anyway, glad y'all uh, chose to watch today. Uh, thanks so much for being here again, like I said at the very um, outset of the video. Awesome new mold. I love those triple colors. Triple injection is so much fun. And um, yeah, if I can get my temperatures right, I've got an awesome white crappie recipe that I'm now going to do. And um, it's, a, it's fairly simple, so I think I'm going to try to replicate it a lot and um, offer it up to some people who are asking for uh, crappie patterns. Uh, so hopefully that's something that we can uh, bring to you guys soon. But um, yeah, shoot me lots of comments below. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It's time to eat.